Hello, Popcorn Kid Crew. How's everybody doing today? Today we are going to read Pinocchio. You guys, Pinocchio was always one of my favorites. It had everything involved in that story. But before we get started, did you say I am the greatest? Hmm? Did you say? Let me hear. There you go. Because you are the greatest. So many of our friends have shared and they've sent messages saying, Miss V, I'm the greatest. And that's what you're supposed to do. But every day you wake up and tell yourself, I'm the greatest. Or I'm going to come and get you. Don't forget, because Miss V is going to check in. Are you guys ready? I'm ready for this. Here we go. Pinocchio. There was once a carpenter named Geppetto. One day he was walking through an enchanted forest when he heard a voice. Hello, it said. Geppetto looked around and soon realized that the voice was coming from a magic piece of wood. Talking wood, he thought. Well, how unusual. Geppetto took the magic wood home and carved a little puppet boy from it. He gave the boy a suit and clothes and a hat with a feather in it. The wooden boy danced around the room for Geppetto and he made him laugh. Hello, he said. Geppetto named the boy Pinocchio. You must go to school like other children. Geppetto told him. So the next morning, Pinocchio skipped off to school on his wooden legs. As he went along, a cricket hopped upon his shoulder. You look like you could use a friend, he told Pinocchio. I will help you to learn right from wrong. A little farther down the road, Pinocchio met a fox and a cat. They had heard the sound of lunch money jiggling in his pocket. Don't bother going to school, said the fox. Come and play with us instead. Oh, oh no. Can you guys already see that something's getting ready to happen? Where did Geppetto tell him to go? Pinocchio, not knowing any better, thought the sound that it sounded like a good idea. I don't think you are doing the right thing, the cricket told him. You promised your father you would go to school. But Pinocchio paid no attention to the cricket. The cat and the fox led Pinocchio into a dark forest. Oh no, guys. Oh no. If you plant money here, it will grow into a money tree. They told him, just come back tomorrow and you'll see it. That doesn't sound right, said the cricket. That money was for your lunch. But Pinocchio didn't listen. He dug a hole in the ground and buried the coins in it. Then Pinocchio went home feeling very hungry. He did not tell his father that he hadn't been to school. <gasps> Pinocchio. That's not good, Pinocchio. The next morning, Pinocchio didn't go to school either. Instead, with the cricket on his shoulder, he skipped into the forest to find his money tree. When Pinocchio reached the spot where he buried his coins, what do you think, guys? He buried his coins, what do you think was there? There was no money tree. He dug down to look for the coins he had planted, but they were gone. <sighs> the fox and the cat have played a trick on you, said the cricket. They just wanted to get your money. 
Pinocchio felt rather silly, but he pretended he didn't care. He stomped off into the forest. I'm going on an adventure, he said. The little cricket begged him to go back to Geppetto, but Pinocchio walked on until it was dark, and he was a little scared. Soon they came to a tiny cottage. Pinocchio ran to the door and knocked loudly. A pretty fairy with turquoise hair answered the door. We're lost, explained Pinocchio. Please, can you help us? The fairy invited them in and gave them some food. Why are you so far from home, she asked kindly. Pinocchio did not want to tell her that he had disobeyed his father. I was chased by a giant. He lied. Suddenly, Pinocchio's nose grew a little. The giant was taller than the trees, continued Pinocchio. Pinocchio's nose grew even more. And I ran into the forest to escape, he continued. And Pinocchio's nose grew again, guys. He touched it in wonder. I have put a spell on you, said the fairy. Every time you tell a lie, your nose will grow. Look, look at Pinocchio. Look at the cricket. I'm sorry, can you see? And look at the beautiful fairy. Pinocchio has a spell on him, guys. Have you heard this story before? You know I have to ask you that. You probably heard a different version of it. I love this story. All right, come on, guys. <gasps> Pinocchio began to cry. He wished he had gone to school like his father had said. I won't tell any more lies, promised Pinocchio. The fairy called some friendly woodpeckers who pecked on Pinocchio's long nose until it was back the way it used to be. In the morning, Pinocchio rushed back through the forest with the little cricket perched on his shoulder. From now on, I will do just as father tells me, he said. But when he got home, Geppetto wasn't there. Instead, there was a note on the kitchen table. Dear Pinocchio, I have gone to look for you. I miss you, my son. Your loving father, Geppetto. Pinocchio was very sad. Why do you think he was sad, guys? Why was he sad? He knew he had caused a lot of trouble. We must find my father and bring him home, he sobbed. He's crying, he's sobbing, guys. So he and the cricket set off again at once. They began their search down by the river. Pinocchio stood too near the edge of the water and fell in with a splash. The cricket jumped in to help him, but they were both swallowed by an enormous fish. Oh my goodness. Wow. There in the fish's tummy, oh, guys, they found Geppetto. Pinocchio hugged his father tightly I won't leave you again, he said. The clever wooden boy took the feather from his hat and tickled the fish. Ah, chew! The fish gave a mighty sneeze and Geppetto, Pinocchio, and the cricket 
shot back out through the fish's mouth and landed on the bank of the river. That night, Pinocchio was tucked up in his own little bed. Fast asleep, the fairy with the turquoise hair flew in through the window. You're a good, brave boy, she said as he slept, and she kissed him on his forehead. When Pinocchio awoke the next morning, he found that there was no longer, he was no longer made from wood. He was a real boy. From then on, he was always a good son to Geppetto and the best of friends with the cricket who didn't need to tell him right from wrong ever again. The end. Look at there. Isn't this a wonderful story? Pinocchio learned right from wrong from the little cricket. And he also learned that telling a story or a lie is bad. You guys, we can learn a lot from Pinocchio. We need to learn the difference from right and wrong. And sometimes others are there to help us. So Popcorn Kid Crew, anytime you see that somebody needs help, it's okay to help them. But you always have to be kind when you're doing it. Did you enjoy this story? If you did, share this story, like this story, and please subscribe to the Popcorn Kit. We're meeting so many fun friends, and I'd love to hear your comments. Come on over and give us a hug. Come and hug our channel. <gasps> Speaking of hugs, come on over here. Mm. I love you guys. Peace.